Hey guys and gals, welcome to Miyagi Mornings, episode 55, and today I have a question that came off of the MeWe post about Miyagi Mornings. It's a pretty interesting one, and it is uh, multi-layered. We're going to peel off like one real layer of it. It's like, are you prepared to be disabled uh, temporarily or long-term? Are you prepared to get old? Right, And, and things like that, losing capabilities and, and losing, uh, you know, mobility and what have you as we age and losing the ability maybe to do as much physical labor as we age as well so there's way more there than we can unpackage in you know 10 minutes on a Miyagi mornings video so I want to talk about something that we've had direct experience with both a few years ago and we're dealing with right now and that is short-term disability that limits movement and in my experience there's two things that can do that more so than any other injury, and those are knee injuries and back injuries. Um, anybody that's ever had a really thrown out back knows it's it's very limiting in your ability to move. It's hard to get comfortable, and you you can't really do much physically moving around well if it's a really bad back issue, and you're not only limited then in your mobility with your legs, you're limited in your arms. Knee injuries are incredibly limiting. Um, in that you, you just feel that you can't do anything. And those are the ones that, that we've dealt with and are dealing with. So a few years ago, quite a few years ago now, I had a serious knee injury, and the total recovery period was over two months. But the acute stage of the injury lasted a couple weeks where I could not move without crutches. Uh, we happened to be on the road when it happened, so I ended up having to be wheeled through an airport in a wheelchair by my wife. It was, uh, it was not a good experience coming home. Bad turbulence. It was, it was a pretty rough experience. And then just this week, my wife had her knee go out. And we're not really sure why. She didn't really have, like, an injury due to something she did. Her knee felt kind of tight and achy in the morning. And she was getting ready to leave and go pick her grandkids up and pop. And, uh, you know, meniscus or LCL or MCL, who knows? Um, she's way better today, and that's only in four days, and that's a good thing. But knee injuries are one of those things that you have to be, like, once you have it, you have to be really careful about worsening it and re-injuring it. And so part of the mindset here needs to be that there are some injuries that instead of, I'm still going to push through it, you need to stop. And you need to relax. And my wife struggles with this. She's not the kind of person who likes to sit on her butt all day long. It's not her. And so this week's been a struggle just to say, stay. Let me get it for you. What have you. And I know people have this mindset of, well, if you're not going to try, then, you know, you're not going to recover. Knee injuries and back injuries during that acute phase when the swelling's high, especially something like a joint, like a knee, if there's actually a tear in the meniscus or something like that, it's dangerous to push at all in the beginning, you should stay off it as much as possible. And even when it starts to get better, that's when it's really dangerous. And you can take something that might have you, you know, take a two to three weeks to recover decently. And then maybe another month of just taking it easy, but being able to move around and be normal. Right. And you can turn it into something that's multi months or requires surgery to correct. And the same thing with the back injury. Right. So, we need to be prepared, and so how do we prepare? One of the greatest blessings that we had is that the fact that I had already experienced this a few years ago, we were on the road, we had nothing to deal with the problem, and we were stuck there for another couple of days before we came home. So, you know, Amazon overnight to the rescue, and I ordered knee braces, and my wife took an Uber and went and got me a set of crutches um, from like a local Rite Aid or something like that and it started immediately applying comfrey ointment to it which I credit with that injury with you know basically saving me from the need to have surgery because any doctor that looked at that would have said this this is not going to heal on something you have to have surgery and it's I, at this point I'm completely and totally healed for years right my wife's I'm a little more concerned about because I don't know exactly what happened like I knew what happened to mine right um because it was an acute injury. Hers just happening like that. That's, you know, what's really wrong. And, you know, when you go to a doctor, what are they going to give you an MRI and try to talk you into surgery? So uh, the initial thing to do is to rest it. So the first thing that we did when she ended up in that situation was I said, just stay there. You know, she was on one foot holding onto a back rail of a chair, and I went and got the crutches. 
And that way she was able to move to the camp, she'd sit down, got in touch with our kids. You're going to have to bring the grandkids here today. And, you know, then proceeded to that whole day of basically anything she needed. I or one of the grandkids went and got it for her. And so I think that the things that you should have at a minimum on hand in case an injury like this occurs is a set of crutches, some knee braces, um, and uh, some can- a cane or two around because depending on how bad the injury is. And then I think that before you're injured, believe it or not, walking with crutches and walking with a cane is a skill. And most people, the way they think you do it, it's not the way you do it, right? So um, I can't really explain that in a video like this, but it's something I think you should actually learn how to walk with crutches and learn how to walk with a cane with either leg having been the, e- the, the injured leg. And with a cane, you kind of follow it, and you're putting it down as you put the foot down, and you're bearing the weight with your body as you transfer the other leg. And the, and the crutch is very much the same thing. If you have a serious leg injury and your, your solution with crutches is what I see a lot of people do, which is just kind of hang your knee so you're not bearing any weight on it and then just you know kind of propel yourself hopping on one foot, what happens is that knee's doing this, and if that's the knee, you can injure it just from the momentum of doing that. You have to be really careful. Um, I also recommend that everybody keeps some sort of comfrey ointment on hand. I'm a big fan of Dr. Christopher's Deep Tissue and Bone uh, or Complete Tissue and Bone. It's a fantastic product. Uh, I do make my own comfrey ointment, but Dr. Christopher's has things other than comfrey. And for that type of injury, that's what I would go. Now, that's kind of what I wanted to confine today to is that type of either back, knee, I can't move. Um, because again, there's so many ways that this can, and you know, a permanent disability is a totally different situation. And that's something that like the only real prep for that, that I can give you is, uh, long-term disability insurance. I mean, really that's, that's a totally different world. Getting old, that's something that we generally kind of scale into over time. It's not really abrupt. We don't go from 50 to 75 in, in one year. Right, we're not like dogs. We don't age that fast and accelerate at the end. Um, so we generally have some time to adjust to that. But that's important. And some of the things that you can do that will help with the acute injury or these other things is all the stuff on your homestead. Try to automate as much as you can. Try to make where you have to do as little as possible to keep things running. Um, can you leave for a week and your significant other can kind of take care of the place? If not, if either one of you gets hurt, you got a real problem because it's the same situation. Because right now, like everything that we're doing. I have to go do, right? It's not because she doesn't want to. In fact, I have to, like, don't do it. Stay. It's, it's difficult, right? Uh, but we got, you know, ice coming in. We've got the coldest cold front that we've ever experienced. I've got all my systems I have to worry about. Um, we have family in town. I just had a friend in town for a couple of days. Like, it's everything always comes at once. And these, these types of injuries, these abrupt injuries, they show up when you least expect them. Like, that's the whole point, right? Like, you don't plan to get hurt, right? You plan not to get hurt. And there's never a good time. But it does seem like they always dogpile on, like, the worst situation that you could be in to have it happen now. And so I think that having the stuff that you need on hand is really, really important. And then having a mindset and an understanding that there are certain injuries. And this is, like, I think this is really important. And I know there's a lot of fortitude in this audience right these are you guys are not the guys cowering in your toilet paper for it right hiding from the covid um you guys are people that are out still living your life you're not afraid you're bold individuals but there's times when fortune favors the bold and there's times when fortune favors the cautious and i think there's an old saying that's something like old men don't get old by being brave they get old by being cautious and it doesn't mean that you're afraid or fearful, but cautious simply means you think before you act. And so having the right mindset that if this type of injury occurs, we've got a plan in place to deal with it, and I am going to take the time or my significant other is going to take the time to recuperate. And then where you really have to think about this at a higher level of automation is if you live alone. And my wife already said, man, she said, I've been thinking so much about people, older people that live alone, and if something like this happens, what do they do? And so if you have a lot of stuff that keeps you busy, that's fine. And if it requires hard, like I'm all for hard work, but whatever the minimum threshold of keep everything going, stuff doesn't die. You need to take that and dial that down to as easy and as little labor as possible, which is a good plan anyway. 
That's, that makes it a low energy system. And that means that like if you have to hire someone off next door or something and they come over, you can explain the minimum of what needs doing and you can get somebody to do that for you for you know a few bucks or something until you can, you can recover. So hopefully I did a good job on this one. This is not like a really exciting uh, discussion to have. It's not something people want to think about getting hurt, but we do. We get hurt. I mean, everybody I know has been injured to the point of not being able to really fully function at one point or another in their life. It's almost inedible as a human that we exist as a fragile creature in some ways, and we're going to deal with this. And there is very few things, in my experience, again, with back injury and a knee injury. Knee injury, well, I'm talking where you can't bear weight on a leg. You, you just feel that you can't do anything. And it's, it's also a little bit – well, final thing I'll give you, it's, it's depressing. It's depressing. I remember – like, you know, hobbling all my crutches down to this little cafe at the hotel we were staying at and eating a sandwich and watching people just walk by and literally hating those people for just a second. Just thinking, you know, you, don't, you, you, you have no idea. You have no idea what a blessing being able to walk is. And you can get in your head really quick with these injuries. So being mentally prepared to understand, like, things like this do get better. They do go away. And you do recover from them. But you need to be patient in your recovery I think is is a really really important thing, and you have, you are much more likely to get there, mentally if you think about it in advance. And what's funny is and the final thing, kind of with married couples, is when one's injured, the other one absolutely knows what he's doing, and they're always willing to help. And it's the one that's injured that's like, oh, I can do it, I can do it, right? I can do it, and that's really a mistake because that person who's taking care of you during that time is depending on you to get better and if you through pride re-injure or excessively injure a thing that's bad already and you go from needing a week or two or three to recover to needing a month or two or three to recover that's that much longer that the thing you're feeling bad about goes on so my wife keeps asking what can I do and my my response has been this week you can do as little as possible because I don't want this to go longer than it has to. And I know she felt the same way with me as I was being bullheaded during my injury. So think about the other person, not so much from during this time they have to do it all. But if I don't take care of myself, how much longer will they have to do it all? Because you get one body, guys. You get one life at least you know, this time around, I guess you'd say. And uh, so take care of yourselves and be prepared for injuries. Have those first aid kits, but definitely crutches, a cane, um, knee braces. I think those are huge. Slings and stuff like that too, yeah. But, boy, I mean, if your arm's out, you know, your other arm works, your legs work, your back works, you can still kind of get things done with it, like an arm and a sling. Knees and backs, guys, it's, it's really debilitating. And I wouldn't say – I would say that in some situations, especially – you know, keep an eye on things for sale and stuff. Having a wheelchair around, if you have a space for it, it's uh, it's not overkill. And you can buy a decent wheelchair for 100 bucks. And a lot of times they'll be on sale, like on uh, Craigslist and all. You know, people need to get rid of one because they don't see any use for it anymore, 50 bucks. It'd be not a wheelchair that you'd want to be in long term if you had to stay in a wheelchair, like if you had a permanent disability. Um, but... Just having that, in many instances, can be incredibly helpful, especially think about needing to go to the doctor. Think about needing to get somebody into a car, right? Like if you don't have a house where you can pull right up to the front door, and you, I mean, you see what I'm saying? So I think that wheelchairs are probably a good prep to have around too. Take care, guys.